So this should be a quick video that'll close off the simplification unit and set up the next unit, which is all about Carnot maps uh, and their sort of standardized simplification process. So in the last video, we talked about canonical forms. Uh, these were forms that were kind of like a truth table built into the function itself. You could see just by which min terms are present in the function, uh, which inputs will result in a zero or a one uh, in the function itself. Now a standard form is a simplified canonical form in a special way. So a standard form is going to be uh, what we call, there, there's sort of two possibilities, a sum of products or a product of sums. Most of the functions we've seen already are already in standard form. And in fact, canonical forms are a special case of a standard form. A canonical form, which is a sum of min terms, a min term is a product term, so this is a sum of products. And all this form means is that you write out the function in such a way that you've got product terms, and only product terms, and then one great big or summing them all together. So you don't have multiple layers of parentheses, you don't have, you know, an inverter across a whole bunch of stuff. You just have product terms that have literals in them. The literals can be either positive or negative, right, uh, standard or inverted. And then you put them all together with one big or a bunch of pluses. That's sum of products. Product of sums is, as you might guess, the opposite, where you have uh, some terms, where you have literals that are summed together, and then they're all connected in one, in one big and. Uh, you can implement these standard forms fairly straightforward with uh, uh, three levels. Uh, you have one level that will invert some of the variables if you need the, the complement of those variables. Then you have a level which is a whole bunch of uh, one type of gate. There would be a bunch of AND gates for the sum of products or a bunch of OR gates for the product of sums. And then the output of all of those individual term gates would be into one big summation gate at the end that would be ORing them all together or ANDing them all together. So let's have a look at some of those examples. So we call this an OR AND implementation, um, or an AND OR implementation for a sum of products. So an OR AND for product of sums, AND OR for sum of products. We have a bunch of AND gates and then an OR gate, or a bunch of OR gates and then an AND gate. Looks like this. So here's an example of an AND OR standard form. This is not a canonical form, right? Because there's no B in this term. This is a min term for this function because there's three variables, a, b, and c. a, b, c, sorry, a prime, b, c, a, b, c prime, both min terms. But because this isn't a min term, this isn't a canonical form, but it is a standard form. It's a bunch of and terms and then a big or term at the end. A bunch of and terms and a big or term at the end. And we can see this is a, a new representation we haven't talked about yet. You can put a bubble on any of the inputs to the gates and that will make that input negative or inverted. So you don't even actually have to have an inverter here. And there's some dispute whether you call this a two-level design or a three-level design. Um, looking at the logic itself, A has to be inverted first and then fit into this AND gate and then fit into this OR gate. Practically speaking, when you implement this with transistors, you can build a gate that inverts this input without much extra delay. And so most of the time we talk about this as a two-level design. But if you don't want to have these inputs to be inverted, you want it simplified uh, so that your AND gates are only AND gates with no inverted inputs, then you can put an inverter here and it's a three-level design. So that the variables, some of them are inverted, and then you have the OR terms, and then you have one big AND term. This is an example of a non-standard form. So you could simplify this, right? You could recognize that you could pull the B out of these two terms. That would reduce the number of literals, and it might look a little bit simpler. Um, but what you can see is that even though that would give you some simplification in the, in the logic function, it actually adds to a number of additional layers when you actually put it into the logic. Uh, and so this is why we look at these standard forms, because they give us a standardized implementation that we know is going to take at most two gates to process. Um, the non-standard forms, again, if I'm asking you to simplify for something other than gate levels or something other than the standard form, then this kind of a simplification might be useful. The other thing to note about standard forms is we don't have NOR gates, we don't have NAND gates, we don't have exclusive OR, we don't have exclusive NOR. Those are all special gates. The only gates we have are AND or in one order or the other, and or for sum of products, or and then and for product of sums. 
So here's another example in canonical form. Now, if we take this original function from this previous example, this is the standard form implementation. Here it is implemented in canonical form. Just like we did before, we can take the term that is missing a variable. AC doesn't have any B in it. We can expand it using our um, logical rules that tell us that we can put a B or B prime in it without changing the value. And then we get min terms. And you can, I'll leave it as an exercise for you to, to decode which min term these are and name them. I'll tell you that's min term seven to begin with. Uh, and then you can write out a gate. Each of these gates represents one min term. And so again, you have this sort of consistency of information between the representation in the logical function and the representation in the circuit diagram itself. And you also have, once you decode which min term these are, a representation of the truth table. This tells us that there are four circumstances where the inputs will generate a one at the output, and there are four circumstances, the other min terms that aren't listed here, that will generate a zero. And that's all you need to know to fully specify the entire circuit. So each one of these gates it corresponds to a min term. And you can sort of see how they're exclusionary, right? If A is 1, then this term will be, uh, if A is 1, B is, if A is 1, B is 1, and C is 1, this term will be a 0, because it'll invert there. This term will be a 0, it'll invert there. This term will be a 0, it'll invert there. This term will be a 1. And that's the only one coming out of an AND gate for the input 1, 1, 1. But of course, the OR doesn't care. Any of them will do. And then the output is a 1. So this is our example of canonical forms, uh, circuit diagrams for canonical forms, canonicals and standard forms. And we can go back and forth between them by expanding or simplifying min terms into product terms and vice versa. Now, the reason we do all of these sort of higher level theoretical stuff, which seems like it makes it far more complicated than it might be, is because we're driving at this two level minimum cost design. Not just that we can get the circuit done in two levels, but it's the simplest two levels that we can generate. How can we guarantee that it's the simplest two levels we can generate? Or well, we're gonna use a, or we could use repeated Boolean simplification, but as we saw in some of our examples, it can be tricky to sort of convince ourselves that we've got the simplest representation. So instead, we're going to build out a systematic method called Carnot Maps. And this is what the next set of videos is gonna be all about.